In the last video, you probably saw that I got my city car. My dad went to Indiana to pick it up for me. So now I'm, I just got like EV fever. I just want to make bigger battery packs. And a while back, I picked up these old laptop battery packs. I say, let's rip them all apart and bend them depending on how the cells are. If the cells are lower than one volt, I'll save them for smaller things like flashlights and whatever because I won't trust those cells very much. But if they're over one volt, they'll go through a second test, a discharge test, to see how much capacity they have. And if they have more than like 1500 milliamp hours, they'll go into a big battery pack for my tricycle, which will then po possibly go into my car. Those cheap bastards. God. And there we go, 266 cells. This cost me about $60 or so. And that's not a bad deal, I don't think. These red ones are probably like one amp hour each. The red ones always seem to give me issues. Because those, 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 and those. But these other ones are more interesting. Like for instance, these. I've never seen that color before. Or this beautiful color. And these ones even have a sticker on them saying Sanyo and all that kind of information. Made September 3rd, 2011. That's pretty cool. I kind of hope that some of these cells are dead because then I can keep those out without worrying about not using them to their full potential. Just for the color, you know what I mean? Then these are new color. These are a new color for me too. Only blue ones I've ever come across were nickel metal hydride. Which I hope these aren't nickel metal hydride. I hope these are lithium. But yeah. Oh, here's a new color. It's like a brushed out purple with <laughs> with those stupid fake cells. Oh well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start strip stripping down each battery pack and organizing them by less than one volt or more than one volt. Because if they're less than one volt, then there's good chances that some lithium like little fingers have grown between the plates and there's a good chance that it could short circuit someday in the future and I do not want to put those cells into my battery pack. So any cells that are lower than one volt I'll put into this one for use in like small little project batteries and little cool stuff like that where if I have a flashlight and it's just an eight cell pack and it accidentally blows up or it shorts out and fries I don't care whatever I can make more. If one cell like that is in a big battery pack like in my electric car project well if that fails, then that's a huge issue. I want that to be more reliable. And then, of course, if there's cells that aren't any voltage at all, I'm probably not going to even bother trying to revive them because, yeah, they're a little bit too far gone. So let's start off with some of these ones that I'm not too hopeful about. 3.6 volts. Hell yeah. That will probably go into the next stage of testing and possibly go into my battery pack. Now come over here and usually it's a good idea to wear gloves if you're going to do this just because this metal is pretty sharp. I'm going to pull that apart. And these strips are actually made of nickel so you can probably melt them down later on. You can try to get these little like little strips of metal off. These little, like, little pieces that are left over. But I say just leave them on and it'll be good enough. So this was, oh, oh wow, that cell is pretty dead. It's not really anything. This one is probably like 0.2 of a volt still. Yeah, okay, so it looks like this cell is shorted out and it blew the fuse inside here, so this one's totally dead. And this one got discharged in that process, so it's still not very trustworthy, but it's still functional. And so basically I just continue on like this. It's a very nice little thing, put on a podcast. And just kind of 
get into it, you know? So it's now been a week and I've only gotten this many cells organized. A lot of stuff's happened. I mean, I wrecked my trike, got a new bike, got new batteries. Last night I fucked around with welding. Oh man, I'm gonna charge the batteries today. But I also ran to halted and got some more trays to hold more lithium cells. I would love to fill up another one of these blue ones with good cells, because these are actually really nice Sanyo cells and stuff like that. So I hope to strip these down and fill up one of these. It'd be nice if I could fill up like one and a half of these. I'm not really sure how many more I have in this collection here though. I've been looking at different thicknesses for angle iron. Home Depot sells three eight or three quarter inch angle iron for like four dollars per for a three foot section. The design I've planned on using for my tricycle upgrade is going to need forty feet of angle iron, but that's that, if I use it out of this three quarter inch angle iron, it's only going to weigh sixteen pounds. That's not too bad, actually. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, this three-quarter inch angle iron is only strong whenever you have weight in that direction. If you have it in that direction or that direction, it is quite weak because this is just folded, folded metal. This other extruded stuff, though, is a lot stronger in pretty much all directions. So that's one inch, and if I use that, it'll be 30 pounds for it. To be honest, though, adding 30 pounds to my tricycle wouldn't be a very big thing, I don't think. Because it would be 30 pounds with suspension. You know what I mean? As for this, I just... This is a piece of junk I found on the side of the road. Just made an arc with it, and saw how that would go. These goggles are a piece of shit. I got them out... Harbor Freight for the, I went there for the first time. Harbor Freight's kind of cool, but they do have, they do have a lot of shit. The issue with this is that they have air vents on the sides that let light through. So anytime I try to weld, I get blinded anyway. Also, this doesn't really fit around my face, so fuck it. I picked up some batteries from a local place called Bobcat Batteries. These were I think forty-five dollars each. That's not bad. I mean, $45 isn't too bad. Wait, well, you no, know, I take that back. This one was $55 because it's a Duracell one. But yeah, $45, $55, and $45 for this other one. And this other one was made in February 2015. So these are all pretty new. And these three ones that I got are Deep Cycle. Aside from that one that I found on the side of the road for free. But hey, whatever. And it just so happens that my... Actually, me and Jay's solar panels coupled together will output like 60 volts or 48 volts at their best voltage whenever they're whenever they have load pull up, pulled down on them so I say let's let's move these over there connect them up and have them charging let's see these panels are outputting 57.2 volts that's pretty good and they should give like six amps of power well we have it all hooked up here through these little wires, but the the thickest jumpers I can get. Voltage difference between the panels and the batteries is 5.53 volts, so the panels are at 5.53 volts above the batteries. Let's go to amps. Let's see how much pulls. 1.3 amps. That's not too bad. It's actually pretty good. It's a nice little trickle charge voltage. I am very thankful that we have such nice weather out here. It's summer, but it is like 94 degrees right now, so I think I gotta take the party inside. I'm gonna take some of these inside and start ripping them open. Okay, so that went into there, so now I can take these inside to make it more manageable. So I've gotten a fair bit of lithium cells, but then I fell asleep and woke up two hours later. It's eight o'clock, and I only have this many done. Oh well. 12.6 volts, that's good. Well, good for a battery found on the side of the road. Oh, 
12.71. Not super happy about that voltage, but oh well. Having a hard time getting a connection on this one. Darn. 12.68. Hmm, that's not too bad. Here it's pretty much cleaned up now. T today, I opened up the speedometer that I, I bought from eBay for $7. And I bought the wrong one. I brought a wireless one. The wireless one is the stupid, stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard of. So basically, you need a battery for the reader unit. You need a battery for the meter, or for the, um, the display unit. Why, why can't they just add a fucking wire like mine? That makes no sense. Just have a single CR2032 th and have this. I mean, really? Why can't you just do that? Oh well. So I finally got the rest of those laptop battery packs all whittled, whittled down. And have all the cells stripped out of them. I should have like a good 190 or so cells here. I don't know. I haven't really counted them yet. Oh, and it just occurred to me. I have a whole other two of these of red lithium cells that I'm not too too hopeful that they're going to be any good. But I do have them stashed somewhere. I'll have to go find those. So I have probably like another 80 or so cells. Well, whenever I went to the recycling center this Monday, I got some more laptop batteries. So look at that. It's going to kind of let that build up a little bit. And just, this is going to be an ongoing thing. So I said let's just call it quits. You know what I mean? I think it's good enough for this video. So now what I'm basically going to be doing is going, I'm going to be systematically charging these cells. So I'll take them, charge them up to 4.2 volts, and then I'll move them over to a bin where they're like good and charged. And then when I'll, when I have a, a good amount of good charged batteries, I'll take my IMAX P6, which actually I'm probably going to get like eight of these, just have them all running at the, at the same time, all discharging each cell, and I'll have eight cells going at any given time, and whenever they're done, I'll write their capacity on them, and then I can judge how good they are. And if they're like below 1500 milliamp hours, I probably won't use them. And I can use them for other things, like a bicycle battery pack or something like that. So yeah, it's going to be like three stages that these cells have to get through in order to get into my battery pack. They have to be found at over one volt, they have to hold that voltage, and then they have to be able to give or they have to be, they have to hold 4.2 volts, and then they also have to give at least 1.5 milliamp hours on a one amp discharge. Maybe it was 500 milliamp hour discharge, or 500 milliamp discharge. I can't remember. I think it would probably be good to go with a one amp discharge because this is for an electric car, and an electric car is going to take a lot more power than my bike. So we shall see. Then again. The actual capacity of how much my city car will take is actually turning out to be a lot less than I expected because due to Pukert's law, the golf car batteries in my city car, I believe, should only give about 60 amp hours of capacity, not 225. So that means that the car only takes like 80 watt hours to go a mile as opposed to like 250 watt hours per mile. So that's that's a big increase. So that means that the battery pack I'm aiming to make could possibly take it about 300 miles. 300 miles of range in an electric car. It's pretty damn good. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this video and thanks for watching. See ya.